Spring is one of my absolute favorite times. And the main reason, well, it is turkey time and I love turkey hunting. Now this episode, I'm headed to South Dakota and I'm going after turkeys on the Rosebud Sioux Reservation. Now I was pretty excited and actually the way I got hooked up to come back here turkey hunting, well, I was on a whitetail hunt earlier in the year, shot a beautiful, nice six by six buck and got to be good friends with Ben Bearshield. Now Ben invited me back and he is an incredible turkey hunter. Ben does a lot of turkey hunting and a lot of turkey watching out in South Dakota. Basically, I started turkey hunting, I'd say, probably about 10 years ago, and we do it every year, and we do it pretty much as much as we can. I've got, you know, brothers, and my sister like to hunt, so we get after it as much as we can. You know, when we're not working, we'll get together and, you know, go, go out and hunt and kill a few birds. Now, the nice thing about South Dakota is the fact that you can get several tags. You can get tags in the state part of South Dakota, but we were hunting on the Rosebud Reservation. Now how the Rosebud Reservation works is you get two tags as part of your first set. Then once you get those turkeys, if you'd like, you can turn it in and if more tags are available, you can take another two turkeys. So it really makes it well worth the trip and let's face it, there are a lot of turkeys out here. Well, the first morning, uh, we got in there in the dark, and we didn't quite get as close as we wanted to, but we got, you know, close enough to where, you know, he would work, he could work to us. As the turkeys came closer, we had a decoy out and we're doing some calling. But these two, well, they were kind of off in their own world. In fact, well, something was going on that I had never seen before. I've done a lot of turkey hunting, but I have never seen a hen spin a tom in circles like what was going on. This hen literally had him spinning round and round and round. I thought he was going to get too dizzy and tip right on over. But no one knows what she was doing, but the good thing she was doing, she was bringing him right to us. Look at that, man. Look at that. He's got big spurs on him, too. Look at that. Holy cow. Probably a four-year-old bird. That is awesome. When he was coming in, this one feather, I almost thought he was actually missing some in the middle. I've never seen that before. It got that white, those white little bars in there. That is really cool. Yes, these are some nice spurs. I didn't even get the yeah. chance to look at them. I mean, right from the time he flew down, he was breeding hens, basically. He had, what, two hens with him? Yep, there's two hens, and they tangled for about the first 20 minutes of the hunt. <laughs> Have you ever seen him spin He's got to be pretty worn out by now. It's a new bird, that's for sure. Well, we're out here hunting on the Rosebud, and this has just been an awesome hunt. I've been lucky enough to come out here deer hunting, and now I've got my first turkey down. We'll see if we can find another one. Sounds good. Well, this one's pretty sweet. <laughs> One of the main goals I had on the South Dakota hunt was to try to fan in a turkey. I've seen the footage, Ben told me about all the great stories about it, and I was really hoping it would happen. But the hard part is, well fanning is just like decoying in a deer. It doesn't always work. You've got to hit them at the right time, the right time of the day, and you've got to get a gobbler in the right mood. So we were going to try it, but so far we weren't having any luck. You've got birds that are hand up. It gets hot, you know, it starts raining, gets windy for whatever reason, you know, they might not want to work in. So it, it, it can work, but it, it can also um, work against you because sometimes the bird get, birds get intimidated by it or they'll get scared of it. 
One of the great things about hunting the Rosebud Reservation is the fact you have so much land to hunt. The turkeys, well, they're abundant, but when the weather's hot, it doesn't matter how many turkeys there are, most of them do not want to call back, and they really don't want to do a whole lot of anything. But we weren't going to give up. I knew the mornings and evenings would probably be the best, but we were there on a turkey hunt. So I wanted to spend my time throughout the day turkey hunting. So Ben and I, we were putting on the miles, walking up to hills, glassing, trying different things just to see what would work. Well, yeah, we've been hunting in some tough conditions, probably the, the toughest conditions I've ever hunted in. Um, I know I've hunted in the, you know, the low 80s before, but never nothing in the 90s. And I know for sure I looked at the thermometer a couple of times during the day and it was in the, the low 90s. So really what happens when it gets that hot is these birds, they seem to shut down about an hour after they come off the roost. What we'll do is we'll, you know, we'll kind of find a high spot or we'll find a spot where we know the birds frequent and we'll, we'll basically glass them and, and kind of see what they're doing and how they're acting, you know, where they're going, and you kind of make a strategy off of what you see. Midday, we decided we've got one field that the turkeys were definitely frequenting, so we were just going to set up, put our decoys up. Looking at them up close, the two really had me puzzled. They had full fans, but little Jake beards, and one even had a double beard sticking out. But from what I could tell, I couldn't see any spurs. It was really tempting, but I decided after looking at them close, these are Jake's, and they just happened to have full fans. But they were completely fooled by our decoys. So we got them gobbling and gobbling and gobbling hoping it would maybe attract some other birds in the area. And sure enough, I looked over to the side and a big old long beard had popped out of the timber and let out a gobble. I figured with the jakes on our decoy, it was game on. But unfortunately, it wasn't the case. He was a little bit hesitant, but still coming our way. The jakes were going to town on the decoy, and as he got closer and closer, I still didn't have a shot because he was just too far over, and I assumed he'd eventually come into the decoys. But as he came closer, I don't know if these jakes had beat him up before or what the problem was. He ended up going back in the timber, and I had no shot. The jakes, well, they were still going to town on the decoys and eventually left. But unfortunately, that big long beard, he was just too spooked by the jakes, and sometimes that happens. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews, catch us if you can. Cuddyback Digital. Bog Pod, versatility defined. Easton, expect the best. Winchester Repeating Arms. And Hunter Safety System. We were glassing, just everything we did, even if we could see a turkey, they just weren't coming in. So that evening, we decided we're gonna find some birds and roost them. That way we have a good spot to set up in the morning. So we found a great roost tree, watched them, and we couldn't really figure out a good way to get in close to these birds. So we thought we're just gonna sit back and watch, and the next morning, we're going in after them. We'll be able to get right in below them. So are you thinking just getting in that brush in the morning? Yeah, see that kind of that dark brush on the left there? Mm -hmm. Over here, just left of the green tree, mm -hmm. right in there. And then there's like a 50 yard opening that goes, that follows that ridge line mm -hmm. below it. And we'll just put the decoys out there and wait for them to fly down. Well, that morning, we set up not too far away from the fence gap. Now, Ben knows the area extremely well and said a lot of times these birds will come down, they'll fly down, and they head right through that fence gap. So that's where we were set up. Right on cue, these birds flew down, and as they were heading toward the fence gap, well, there were a ton of deer out in the field next to us. 
And when that wind switched and one of those deer got our wind, well, they busted out just about the same time these gobblers were coming down right in front of us. Unfortunately, they kind of run in the direction of the turkeys. And then I hear the turkeys start popping and, and they kind of just screwed it up for us. I, I think if they had waited about 30 seconds, we would have got it done before they had seen something. But you know, that's the way it goes. You set up in, in good habitat like that. You got deer and turkeys all mixed in one. You got a lot of eyes and uh, it's kind of tough, you know, keeping yourself concealed. things. You have the perfect setup, you're all ready in the morning, you think it's a given, it's going to work, and it doesn't. That's one of the good and bad things about hunting in a game rich area. The deer can bust you right alongside the turkeys when you're trying to get in close to one of those gobblers. Well that was close, they were coming, I think they'd have been right in our lap. Yeah they were, we had the perfect setup, probably 30 yards from the gate that they come through and, and it, it was working like we wanted it to. but. As you can see, the deer come. There were a the north. lot of deer. I, yeah. I think they must have just got our wind down. Yeah. They were all out in that field. And those hens, I mean, they were coming right in. There was a bearded hen. Gobblers were right behind them in tow. Well, that's the way it works sometimes. The bad yeah. timing, I guess. What do you want to try now? You think? Well, I'm, when we were sitting there, I could hear a couple goblins here to the west, so, mm -hmm. or to the east. So we'll, we'll just work our way that way and see if we can get a visual on one, and we'll just try working him in. Oh, well, he's not still cool. Yeah. We got maybe we about two hours left. We got about an hour left, but <laughs> it's 90 degrees. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Swarovski Optic, North American Hunting Club, Rage Broadheads, Golden Triangle Whitetail, Can-Am ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles. Send killer gold with hunt dry technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. And M&P, advanced by design. Closed captioning is brought to you by the 4-in-1 Woodsman from Zippo Outdoor. I've had great luck blind hunting. I do a lot of bow hunting for turkeys, and if you can get that blind into an area where you know they're coming through, it's great because you can put your decoys out, you can get all situated, and you can really watch the show. And that's my favorite part about turkey hunting, is seeing them come in, come into your decoys, and getting a big flock of decoys out, and also getting all my cameras up. So we decided now we're gonna change it up a bit and go sit in a blind. So we put all our decoys out and I littered the area with cameras. I wanted to make sure to capture this from every angle possible, but we were there pretty early because we didn't want to have the chance of spooking any turkeys that could potentially come in. We got there apparently a little too early because by the time we finally got a gobble and had a gobbler coming in, all my cameras were dead. But that's pretty typical. The camera in the blind was still good. So as we called, this gobbler was going crazy, back and forth, back and forth, and my heart was pounding.
nothing like having him in clothes. That worked just like we thought it would. I think he would have stayed all day if he would have. No. He'd, he'd be here for half an hour if we let him. I waited for quite some time and then I'm like, well, he wouldn't clear that decoy. The last thing I wanted to do was put a big hole in the side of my decoy. I know. I actually was starting to think that he was going to be a double beard. I only just got one. It, it was, was kind of separated there. there as he came in. I thought it was two. Boy, was I shaking. You know what? It's awesome calling him in from that far, but boy, do you get shook up on it. Just a nice fan. Wow, that was awesome. Nice thick beard. Two-year-old, two-year-old bird. That is awesome. And you know what the coolest part is? It's not the end of the day, and uh, Martin still has a tag. Yeah, so. we still got some time left, so yeah, we'll go and see awesome. if we can get another one. After putting my two birds down, I decided it was time to switch gears. Martin, my cameraman, also had a couple of tags, so I let him get up for the hunting, and I went behind the camera. Well, after Melissa killed her bird, we, we were sitting down around and kind of talking about the hunt, and I looked over on the ridge to the south about half a mile, and we seen some birds working down a ridge. So we went after them, and basically the strategy on this hunt was, was just to get in and, and fan them. As we set up, the turkeys were right there. Ben put that fan up, and those turkeys saw it and started coming in. Unfortunately, we didn't have much cover. It worked, they came in, but when, when they come around the tree, they seen something that just wasn't right, and, and it was enough to, to keep them at a little distance. The way we were set up, both Ben and I could see the turkeys but Martin was just a little off to my right and had a different angle than the camera, and that big tree was right in his way. All these turkeys had to do was step out a little further, and it would have been all over, but not today. So the next morning, we got all set up near a roost, and of course, the birds went off the opposite side but we did spot one lone gobbler and a hen taking off in their own direction, so we decided this was the perfect opportunity to make a move. So we skirted around the side, got in front of them, and set up just on the back side of a hill. Now as that big gobbler came right over the edge, it was really cool. It couldn't have worked out any better and we were barely hidden. But the good thing is, well this turkey, he was all focused on the decoy and never even saw us. I think our timing was about perfect on him. That was awesome, man. I've never, never fanned in a bird before, but Ben just showed us how it was done, and it worked well. Speaking of fans, he's got a, got a nice one, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Full. He's Big not bird. Feathers. What's he got for, for spurs? Looks like he's not a two-year-old bird. Not too bad. Yep. Decent little beard too. I could see it on the uh, when he was silhouetted up there on the skyline. That was pretty cool. That sun behind him. Yeah. Anyway, that worked out good. Ben's been telling us about fanning these birds out here in, in South Dakota. We're on the Rosebud, and we've tried it two or three times, and it's actually worked out pretty well. We just hadn't got shots, or the birds just didn't commit, but uh, we got it done. I was happy to be able to get him that last bird because you know it, it, it was kind of a long week with the, the weather and the hot, you know, the birds not working. So when we were able to, were able to get his, it kind of capped off the, you know, kind of icing on the cake. 